guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, working with some of this attic foil radiant barrier, adding it to this cathedral ceiling in here in my new secret room. I want to show you what you get in the box and how I'm installing it based on the manufacturer's recommendation. Let me open this up here and get a better look. Here's what's in the box. Nice roll, big roll of uh, foil tape and the beautiful, lovely four foot long roll of radiant barrier. I bought a bunch of this half inch uh, insulation. This is uh, uh, just regular old DuPont poly ISO from Lowe's that I'm cutting into approximately two inch strips. I've set a couple up here. What I'm doing right now is a mock-up of my um, of my air gap, so none of this is glued yet. And I'm going to basically set up a mock-up section here to show you guys on video. But really, what you're essentially doing is you're creating an air channel, so you need to have adequate ventilation for air to draft up up the sheathing to the ridge, and then hopefully you're lucky and you actually have a ridge vent. I did a previous video on how I'm ventilating this ridge. So check that out on my channel, but basically we need to bring this up. So in normal cases, you'd use a baffle, but I don't want to use a baffle. I'm going to go ahead and do this per the manufacturer's spec and make my own air chamber or air channel. So I can put an R30 up here because right now this is just a two by eight. So I got to pad this down another three and a half inches. So let's get going here, but that's what we're doing. Measure the first rafter bay here. I'm coming up at just shy of 23 inches. So this isn't an exact science. I'm gonna give myself about a two inch staple overlap on each side. So I'll go ahead and cut this at probably 27 inches uh, width by four foot long. So I thought I'd film my setup on how I'm cutting it because it is a wider, it's four foot long by, we're gonna go 27 cut. So I marked 27 here. If you have a table, you do the same thing, just mark it. And then I got a nice little T-square. It's a four foot long T-square. Uh, so I can square it up against the edge of the table. So I'm just running my edge to here and then I can run my razor blade and cut it. So this is just a little tip on, you know, keeping it consistent because you don't want to keep eating into the material. You want to try to maximize how much you get out of it, even though it's a pretty good price. So bending the corners, little trick. Uh, this is going to give you your side nailer area this is where you're going to staple off so i measured since i'm 27 inches wide my base 23 inches i got two inches on each side to work with so i just measured two inches up made a mark two inches up and made a mark and then i laid it against the edge in your case it would be a table and then just made a nice crease on it and then this way i have a working edge to use so i'm going to do it on the other side so you should have something that resembles this got an ear on one side and an ear on the other the name of the game is just to get it up in there with a gap. Okay, so I'm laying on my back here in this stud bay, and I have this set here. And if you guys were wondering about like this stuff collapsing like in between, like when you push the insulation back, it's pretty rigid for what it is. So it's definitely gonna keep that air channel. That's the one thing I was worried about. So I got it tucked pretty, pretty top back there. I'm gonna leave a little bit of an air gap back here. Don't ask me why, I just feel like it makes more sense. Right there. And it's just kind of resting in place so you can kind of see down the line. It's it's pretty good. So I'm gonna get the staple gun going here and start throwing in some staples. Now what I'm using here, pick this little bad boy up. I'll throw an affiliate link down below from Amazon where you can get this. Not a bad 50 bucks, 60 bucks. It's rechargeable and it's powered. So it's got an on-off switch on the back, it tells you it's on. And I'm using some uh Aero brand staples. The more we get into the video, I'll show you the staples I'm using, but definitely invest in one of these T50 staplers by Aero. Uh, this is gonna save your hand. Um, <laughs> you gotta do a whole roof. This will definitely come in handy. So here's the first piece installed. You can see it there. I really like this stuff. I really do. It's very easy to work with. And no, I was not paid by Attic Foil. He doesn't even know who I am. I just bought it on his website, so. There's the air gap that it's creating, so you can see when your insulation is pushed here. And if you don't jam the insulation in, you'll create that air gap, but still, it's going to create space for air to flow. You can't ever compress completely against here. Even if you completely compress it, I'm pushing as hard as I can here, you're still going to have a nice air gap. 
So as long as you keep keep the rafter bays nice and taut as you go. So I would do one staple on one side, it would tighten it up and go on the other. And I could even add more staples, but I just wanted to get this up for, for the video. It's got some reinforcing in it, so it's not gonna tear like you think it would by looking at it. It's got some like um, nylon or something in it that keeps it uh, very rigid and strong. Very easy to work with. So I'm gonna keep going, do one more bay here um, not for my video's sake, and then I'll upload a longer version of this. Okay, so there's my second run. I might have went a little aggressive with the overlap because you can see those strips are four feet. The sheet's four feet, so I probably went three inches with overlap. So I'll fix that as I go. But there it is, continuous, all the way down, side stapled, go to wide. So you can get an idea of what you're doing. And there's your air gap all the way down. So in theory, if you have a ridge vent, the air can flow all along the sheathing. You know, ideally you'd probably have another soffit on that side, I don't. That's why I'm using a power ventilator. But your air would flow up the soffit underneath that radiant barrier. You're keeping that air gap so radiant barrier works. You can't, your radiant barrier is not gonna work if you press it against the sheathing. There's nothing for it to reflect. There's no uh, volume for it to reflect away with. So you gotta keep a gap. So you solve two problems, ventilation and air gap for radiant barrier by using the styrofoam. I haven't used any power grab on my styrofoam because luckily my roof is already shingled and the styrofoam always likes to find a nail and then get pressed into it. And it only needs to stay up there as long for the uh, radiant barrier to be attached because then the radiant barrier holds it in place. So you can see this stuff's not too, not too shifty. It, you know, you'll get a little wiggle out of it because the styrofoam, but it ain't going anywhere. So. There it is, all the way up. So I'm gonna take it up to where I'm gonna stop and I'm creating an A-frame up here. So I'm gonna create an air gap up here. Okay, well, it's been a day or two since I last filmed those first clips. And you can see I've got over halfway down on the radiant barrier. And look at the difference. 93 degrees, 94 degrees on this side. Move the camera. And then look at that orange, 121, and it's pretty overcast today. Just look at that difference of radiant barrier. So the purple is obviously the coolest part in frame. The yellow, yellowy orange color is the hottest part. So, I mean, it's just, it really is doing its job. All right, guys, well, it's been a little bit since I've done that last clip and I've done pretty much all of this roof section here. I'm about a little more than halfway done. I still have to do this sector over here, but you can see that's what it looks like when it's installed. This obviously needs to continue on in my Ridge channel. I gotta add a little more up in here, but this basically is the air bridge that I've created. So the power ventilator, pulling all that hot air into that first power ventilator and pipes it straight out side outside into the soffit blows it outside into the open atmosphere so the drywall is actually going to attach to the bottom of this uh, stud here there'll be insulation uh r30 insulation in between or probably r21 insulation in between the uh stud and the bottom of this radiant barrier and then up above that there's probably an eight inch air channel that will be continuous that will flow all the way to that end wall over there and this vacuum this will serve as a vacuum because this will all be closed up and it's going to suck all that hot air out of that ridge automatically running on its on its probe up there and if i ever need to service a fan this will be a little service closet here so that's how i'm going to ventilate my cathedral ceiling without a ridge vent hopefully in your scenario you have a ridge vent and you can just add the radiant barrier and don't have to worry about it. I also want to take you over here. This is how I did my uh, baffle, I guess, if you will, by using radiant barrier. Same concept as a baffle, just basically stapled it to the first top plate uh, nice and tight. And then this way the insulation doesn't fall through the soffit and it can allow that air to rise into the soffit up above the radiant barrier, up the air channel that we created into the baffle, into my ridge chamber get sucked out of the ridge. So I hope this video was helpful, guys. I know it's kind of a little bit choppy. I kind of jumped around with how I filmed it, but I really do hope it helps somebody on installing radiant barrier. 
in their cathedral ceiling or in their attic, installing radiant barrier in your attic. Um, these are my strips. I got a bunch of strips still. This is my workstation I have to clean up for today. And that sheet of rigid there is just to block some of that radiant heat coming in off of that wall when I'm working. So yeah, guys, I truly appreciate all the views, the likes, the comments. Please subscribe. If you want to see more videos like this, let me know and I'll get you in the next one. Later.